This video is sponsored by Conflict of Nations, the free online strategy game happening in a modern global warfare. Are you ready to lead a nation during an intense global conflict? Step into Conflict of Nations, where real-time battles spanning weeks await you, involving up to 128 players. Will you deploy tanks, launch fighter jets, or command submarines for nuclear offensives? Or maybe diplomacy will be your chosen path. Either way, with Conflict of Nations, you'll be the one dictating the strategy, choosing to either face players head-on or create formidable alliances to dominate the global stage. And leading your nation means juggling the economics of an entire country with technological advancements, since in today's warfare, strategy and logistics go hand in hand. Infographic show viewers get a special gift of 13,000 gold and one month of premium subscription for free when they use the link. But it's only available for 30 days, so don't wait. Click the link, choose a country, and start fighting your way to victory right now. Finland's recent admission into NATO has been a game-changer for NATO. Finland's lengthy 830-mile-long border with Russia will spread out any remaining Russian military resources, making it more difficult for Putin to gather sufficient forces for any future invasions. And Finland's army contains some of the best winter troops in the world. But of even more importance will be Sweden's admission. Despite some hiccups that slowed Finland's admission down for a few months, Sweden's admission looks to be delayed much further. Why is it taking so long to approve Sweden into the alliance, if they and Finland submitted their requests at the same time? And is the effort to get Sweden admitted worth it in the long run for NATO? One of the supposed aims that Russian President Vladimir Putin claimed for his invasion of Ukraine was to stop the expansion of NATO's membership further east, into Ukraine. NATO is an entirely defensive organization created to protect its member countries from Soviet Russia's military intrusions into Eastern Europe following the end of World War II. Despite that defensive stance, Putin has claimed NATO is threatening Russia's very existence. He's actually blamed NATO for his invasion by claiming they started the war. With the admission of Finland into NATO and Sweden's admission promised by US President Joe Biden as a foregone conclusion, it seems Putin's efforts to contain NATO might have massively failed. Instead, his militaristic efforts in Ukraine have forced many countries to reverse their previous neutral stance. Sweden joining NATO is assured, said the president on June 1st at a graduation ceremony at the US Air Force Academy in Colorado Springs. His exact words were, it will happen, I promise you. A day before the July 11th and 12th, 2023 meeting of 31 members of NATO, at their annual summit in Vilnius, Lithuania, major progress was made towards Sweden's ascension into the alliance. On July 10th, Erdogan confirmed that he'll stop blocking Sweden's bid to join the alliance, with Hungary following soon after. It seems US Secretary of State Antony Blinken's wish has now come true, as he stated in May that the time for Sweden's membership is now. These two countries joining NATO signal a huge step forward, both for the countries themselves as well as NATO. Both Finland and Sweden have tried to remain neutral following World War II, with Finland having suffered through a Soviet invasion of their own, known as the Winter War in 1939 and 1940. Following that invasion, Finland was forced to sign the Treaty of Moscow on March 12, 1940, through which Finland was forced to cede 11% of their territory to the Soviet Union. Ever since, Finland has been wary of Russian expansionist aims, which is why they they opted to request membership in NATO soon after Russia's invasion of Ukraine in February 22. A little over a year later, in April of 2023, Finland was approved as NATO's 31st member, after some initial delays by NATO members Turkey and Hungary. Those two countries, however, are still refusing to approve Sweden's admission. As per NATO rules, any new additions must be approved unanimously. Part of the reason for that is NATO's vaunted Article 5, which states that any attack on any one member nation will be considered an attack on all of NATO. That unity is what makes NATO such a strong alliance. But there is also no method for removing a country from NATO once they've been admitted. Because of that, every member nation is expected to come to the aid of any other member that's been attacked. That means every member must be willing to support every other member, and that's where Sweden's admission has hit a snag. Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan has been requesting the sale of $80 billion worth of new F-16s and advanced avionics upgrades for its previously purchased F-16s to improve their air force. But some of the members of the U.S. Senate, such as Democrat Bob Menendez, chairman of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, have been reluctant to approve the sale. The senator pointed to Turkey's foot dragging on admitting both Finland and Sweden as one of the reasons for his disapproval of the sale. After winning re-election in May, President Erdogan repeated Ankara's desire to buy the F-16 package, while President Biden told him Washington wanted Turkey to drop its objection to Sweden joining NATO. 
The reluctance to sell more advanced fighters to Turkey has also been in part because Turkey has an on-again, off-again relationship with Russia, which has allowed them to purchase advanced air defense systems from the country, including Russia's state-of-the-art S-400 SAM system. The US is rightly concerned that any advanced US fighter aircraft that Turkey operated could be targeted by such systems, and the data collected could be used to improve Russia's future capability to shoot down US fighters. That's in addition to the S-400 being incompatible with other NATO systems, and in 2021, Erdogan announced that he would be interested in buying additional S-400s from Russia, further infuriating other NATO members, especially those who would prefer Turkey purchased air defense systems from them rather than from Putin's Russia. Weapon systems aside, NATO President Stoltenberg noted Turkey's concerns regarding the presence of the Kurdistan Workers' Party or PKK in Sweden. All NATO allies are, of course, ready to sit down and address those concerns, including the threats posed to Turkey by PKK, Stoltenberg said. With such promises in hand, President Erdogan finally gave his approval to Finland's NATO bid in March 2023, praising the country's authentic and concrete steps in addressing Turkey's concerns about Kurdish expatriates in Finland and and whether they represented a security threat to Turkey. But Erdogan has yet to approve Sweden's entry as he accused the country of supporting Kurdish militants and allowing them to demonstrate on the streets of Stockholm. One such demonstration included the burning of Erdogan in effigy by the Rojava Committee of Sweden. In the wake of that incident, Sweden's foreign minister Tobias Billström wrote on Twitter, portraying a popularly elected president as being executed outside City Hall is abhorrent. However, this statement was not enough to stop Erdogan's outrage. Following this incident, Sweden's Prime Minister Ulf Kristersson admitted that his country might appear to have insufficient anti-terror laws and that his government was in talks with Ankara to see what could be done. On his way to Azerbaijan on June 14th, President Erdogan dismissed the possibility that Sweden would be allowed to enter NATO before the July summit. We cannot have a positive approach to Sweden's NATO admission under the current circumstances. NATO cannot force us to admit Sweden without Sweden acting against terrorism. Unless you resolve this issue, we cannot merrily approve Sweden's membership in Vilnius. Erdogan's comments are in contrast to Sweden's attempts to work with the Turkish government and their complaints against Sweden harboring what they consider Kurdish terrorists. Sweden has even begun extraditing some Kurds convicted in Turkish courts beginning in August of 2022. President Biden and Secretary of State Blinken remain hopeful that they can persuade Turkey to finally approve Sweden's membership into NATO, with possible talks to be conducted during NATO's Vilnius summit. As recently as June 20th, Secretary Blinken met with Turkish Foreign Minister Hakan Fidan, where he stressed the need for NATO unity at this time of Russian aggression and once again encouraged Turkey to support Sweden's admission before the July summit. But if Turkey agrees, there is one more obstacle that NATO needs to navigate. If Turkey can't be persuaded, it would only leave Hungary as the final opposition force for Sweden's admission into the alliance, which is a tougher nut to crack. Sweden has openly criticized Hungary's far-right autocratic leader, Prime Minister Viktor Orban, and raised concerns about both his human rights record and his clamping down on democratic opposition to his rule. On his way to Doha to attend the Qatar Economic Forum in May 2023, Orban said bluntly that his ruling coalition would not vote to admit Sweden. He complained that Sweden unfairly expresses a damaging opinion about the situation of democracy and the rule of law in Hungary. Sweden is not alone in voicing their concerns. Thirteen prominent Hungarian intellectuals banded together to write a blistering critique of Orban's autocratic rule in a book released in 2022. Entitled Igor Shagoshag, Demokratia, Fentar Tatochag, which translates to wickedness, democracy, sustainability. Sweden made their position clear in their support for a September 2022 European Union report that labeled Orban's Hungary as running a hybrid regime with parliamentary autocracy. Orban says his country will deny Sweden's admission unless Sweden revokes this attitude. Orban appears unwilling to move from his anti-Sweden policy. The political relationship between Hungary and Sweden is terribly bad, said Orban. We don't want to bring conflicts into NATO, he said, by approving their admission. Currently, Orban appears to be a solid no, and there doesn't appear to be much that the US and the European Union can do to convince him otherwise. Meanwhile, Sweden seems reluctant to backtrack on what they consider an accurate assessment of his near-dictatorial rule. There is a possibility that the EU itself might consider applying pressure against Hungary. Unlike NATO, the EU requires that its members display a level of democracy in their governments, but so far the EU has not chosen to act against Orban or Hungary in any meaningful way. 
With Sweden's admission currently stalled, let's turn instead to see what benefits admitting Sweden could bring to NATO and why the rest of NATO and the EU should work harder to remove Turkey and Hungary's opposition to Sweden's admission. Sweden's military is tiny compared to many other NATO members. Their army consists of around 24,400 active duty soldiers and a promise to increase those numbers by 30,000 in the next two years. With 121 tanks and roughly 2,000 APCs and IFVs, their Air Force operates less than 100 fighter aircraft with another 60 on order, and their Navy is made up of some 42 blue water combat ships, including four diesel electric subs, seven corvettes, nine minesweepers, 13 large patrol boats, and nine specialized support ships. But those numbers hide the biggest four assets that Sweden brings to NATO. Advanced fighter and anti-tank technology, superior submarine capabilities, unique intelligence skills, and Sweden's crucial geographic position. Sweden's air force may be small, but it does boast what many analysts consider the best non-stealth fighter in the world, the Saab JAS-39 Gripen. It's a relatively low-cost, ruggedly designed fourth-generation fighter that contains several advantages over its closest competitor, the US-built F-16. One of the Gripen's main advantages is its ability to make use of roads and highways for landing and takeoff. That allows the Swedish Air Force to disperse their air force across wide areas of the countryside, making it almost impossible for adversary nations to target their resupply and refueling locations. The Gripen's manufacturer, Saab, has developed mobile maintenance packages that contain all the necessary equipment to operate the aircraft and can be positioned almost anywhere adjacent to any sufficiently long enough roadway. All a Gripen needs is a straight surface of about 2,600 feet and a ground crew of six, made up of one engineer and five trained soldiers. Together, they can refuel and reload a Gripen in as little as seven minutes. One of the requirements for taking off and landing on such primitive surfaces is a stronger undercarriage and special tires, which the Gripen has been equipped with unlike its fourth-generation counterparts. During development, the Swedish design requirements called for a multi-role plane that could perform JAS, which stands for Jagd, Air-to-Air, Attack, Air-to-Surface, and Spanning reconnaissance roles. Continual upgrades have improved the Gripen, with the current model designed as the JAS-39EF. This model boasts a larger engine and fuselage, greater ordnance carrying capability, along with a new cockpit design that includes advanced avionics architecture, a new electronic warfare system, and other improvements. Sweden's participation in NATO would bring with it this advanced fighter, which many analysts see as the perfect fighter for Ukraine to use in its defense against Russia's invasion. The website BulgarianMilitary.com believes that the best plane for Ukraine to defend themselves would not be the F-16, but the Gripen. It features departures from similar runways, including agricultural airports. It can be hidden in a wooded area near a road. Servicing the Gripen does not require a depot but a mobile team. The Gripen is designed to be serviced and maintained in real field conditions. The Gripen design itself was designed to meet a Russian threat in a similar war environment. Sweden not only has the perfect airplane for the war in Ukraine, but also has one of the best anti-tank weapons currently in service, the Carl Gustav recoilless rifle. The current M4 model improves over previous versions by allowing multiple launches from the same tube, which the comparable US-made Javelin does not allow. The Carl Gustav can also shoot different types of ammunition, from armor-piercing and bunker-buster munitions to high-explosive rounds, and even one that expels 1,100 flechettes like a shotgun on steroids. It also implements a special control mechanism in the trigger that allows the soldier operating it to set a delay for detonation after it's made contact, such as with a wall, or to explode above a target similar to what the Javelin can do. The Carl Gustav has been purchased by dozens of nations, including the US, Great Britain, and other NATO members, which makes its implementation with NATO ranks easier. While it may not seem like such a big deal, knowing that Sweden has implemented such a robust and versatile weapon in their military shows they're staying ahead of their future adversaries like Russia, who may try to overwhelm them with tanks and other armored vehicles. One other significant feature of the Swedish military is its surprisingly sophisticated submarine force. While they only operate four diesel electric subs with one more on the way, Way. These are some of the quietest and most effective submarines in the world. How quiet are Sweden subs? How about quiet enough to sink a US supercarrier? In 2005, Sweden participated in an international war game exercise that saw the US deploy the Nimitz-class supercarrier USS Ronald Reagan along with a full complement of support ships, including an Aegis-class cruiser, multiple destroyers, several undisclosed attack submarines, and numerous anti-submarine craft, all in support of the Reagan's 85-90 combat aircraft and helicopters. 
but all of that firepower was no match for a single Swedish sub, the HSMS Gotland. This small, relatively inexpensive, at only about $100 million submarine is powered by a unique Stirling engine, an Air Independent Propulsion System, or AIP. Such a propulsion system is nearly silent and uses the surrounding seawater as a heat sink to increase efficiency if necessary. The Gotland class also has 27 electromagnets spread across its hull to make it almost undetectable to magnetic anomaly detectors. The hull is coated with a special sonar absorbing material, while the interior machinery makes use of sound buffering and vibration absorbent shock mounts. While it may not have the range or ability to stay submerged as long as a nuclear powered sub, it can stay submerged for up to two weeks, much longer than standard diesel electric subs from other countries. The Gotland class is perfect for the narrow restrictions of the Baltic, where its ability to ambush surface targets comes into play, which is exactly what happened to the Ragan. The Gotland, as part of the 2005 war game off the coast of San Diego, made numerous attack runs against the Ragan, all of which went undetected and all of which allowed the Gotland to simulate a torpedo launch and successful post-attack escape. The Gotland's capabilities proved so alarming that the US Navy arranged to lease the Gotland for an additional 12 months following the exercise, in order to study its stealthiness and develop countermeasures to combat similar boats in the future. As good as the Gotland class is, Sweden is already preparing for an even more advanced and stealthier sub, the Blekinja class, also known as the A26. But the improvements, including a larger size and bigger crew with the capability to operate in blue water conditions, has pushed the price tag up to $650 million and delayed their delivery to 2027-2028. Sweden also operates a very stealthy corvette, the 700-ton Visby class. These ships have a reduced radar signature and infrared visibility. The class is already going through a mid-life upgrade and is also being replaced in the future by the next generation version of the Visby, which will provide the newer ships with a modernized RBS-15 anti-ship missile system, a new Saab-designed lightweight torpedo complement, and an improved air defense missile system. With the advanced hardware that Sweden and its designers have constructed, their intelligence services are not far behind either. In fact, the head of the Swedish security service Charlotte von Essen said in February 2023 that Sweden can expect increasing levels of Russian espionage activities targeted at Sweden. We see intelligence activities where people want to obtain sensitive information, but we also see other types of attacks, such as influence operations and various forms of sabotage, she said. According to von Essen, three sectors call for special attention, specifically telecommunications, electricity supply, and the transport of critical material. The Swedish Security Services works together with the Military and Security Service must, in order to prevent Russian agents from accessing or damaging Sweden's infrastructure. Russia has made such attempts in the past, including a high-profile case where two Iranian-born brothers, Payman and Payam Kia, were convicted in 2023 of spying for Russia's military intelligence agency, the GRU. Such spying efforts by Russia have sharpened Sweden's counterintelligence skills, which will be of significant use to the rest of NATO. Along with its sophisticated military and advanced intelligence capabilities, Sweden also holds a unique geographical position as the dominant maritime power in the Baltic Sea. One of its most significant geographical assets is Gotland Island, which sits 105 miles south of Stockholm. Unlike much of Sweden's coastline, which is covered with dense forests and mountain-edged fjords, Gotland contains miles of beaches perfect for both military bases and NATO forward deployment. It's also only about 200 miles from Russia's westernmost naval base at Kaliningrad. This provides a perfect location for blocking Russian naval access to the North Sea and beyond, not just from Kaliningrad but also from St. Petersburg further northeast. Gotland also provides a valuable location for cable relay stations as well as for radar, anti-ship and air defense installations. Sweden's entry into NATO would also allow NATO Air Force units to overfly the country, reducing the amount of time for members like Norway and Great Britain to send air units into the Eastern Baltic. And while some military bases had been decommissioned in 2005, including Gotland, many of those bases are being re-established as part of Sweden's anticipated entrance into NATO. These are part of Sweden's planned 40% increase in military defense spending over the next three years, announced in 2021. They expect to reach NATO's stated goal of 2% of GDP spent on their military by the end of 2026. 
Sweden's location serves as a linchpin between Norway to the west and Finland to the east. Together with Denmark, the four Nordic countries would be able to work together to jointly share bases, defensive arrangements, and other military coordination. Together, they'd provide a strong, united front against any Russian military aggression in the Baltic and its nearby areas. It seems clear that the difficulties Turkey and Hungary had with Finland's admission to NATO were eventually overcome after a series of direct talks and deep negotiations. It should also be noted that despite Finland's admission seemingly taking a long time, their admission was actually the fastest ratification in all of NATO history. Sweden's admission will also seem like a lengthy process, but it's better that the problems are ironed out ahead of time rather than allowing antagonisms to brew in the background, only to explode into something worse when direct military assistance is needed. Sweden will no doubt be a valuable addition to the other 31 members when they are finally approved and welcomed into the collective. When that happens, the Baltic region will be united in their mutual defense, which should be a strong enough deterrent that even the most deluded autocrat will think twice about attacking any one of them. As President Biden said in April 2023, today we are more united than ever, and together we'll continue to preserve transatlantic security, defend every inch of NATO territory, and meet any and all challenges we face. Thanks again to our sponsor, Conflict of Nations, the free online PvP strategy game happening in a modern global warfare. Get a special gift of 13,000 gold and one month of premium subscription for free by using the link. It's only available for 30 days, so don't wait. Choose your country and start fighting your way to victory right now. Now watch Deadly Weapons US is sending to Ukraine, or click this other video instead.